The siege of Syracuse by the Roman Republic took place from 214 to 212 BC. The city of Syracuse had been an ally of Rome, where the previous king had died, and his successor decided to change sides and become allies to Carthage, the city with whom the Romans were warring against. With Rome's ally in the area gone, and their supply lines in danger, they resolved to take Syracuse by force. The Romans had the advantage of superior strength and resources, but the Greeks of Syracuse had a greater advantage. Archimedes. Archimedes was a brilliant inventor, engineer, mathematician, and physicist. He had invented several machines, including one to pump water from low-lying areas, as well as discovering the principles of buoyancy and how levers work. Archimedes' greatest inventions, however, he created when he was tasked to build defenses for Syracuse. Despite their own incredible military strength, Archimedes devised several different weapons to repel the attackers. These were the Archimedes Claw and the legendary Heat Ray as well as some smaller weapons, such as a faster and further firing catapult and ballista. These machines of war struck fear into the hearts of Roman soldiers. Or did it? Did Archimedes have the knowledge to build these fantastic weapons? Did they actually the Archimedes exist? Claw is one of his most notorious inventions. It was designed to deter the powerful Roman navy fleet of galleys from the walls of Syracuse. Plutarch speaks of great weights dropped from above the fleet while others were seized at the bows by iron claws or by beaks like those of cranes, hauled into the air until they stood upright upon their sterns, and then allowed to plunge to the bottom, or else they spun around and dashed against the steep cliffs and rocks which jutted out under the walls of Syracuse. To investigate whether or not the claw truly existed, we must look at two stages, whether Archimedes had the knowledge to build such a machine, and if the invention would have actually worked. Archimedes. Despite not, leaving any plans despite not leaving any had enough expertise in certain enough fields expertise of science to bring it into the world of possibility. His work on levers demonstrated, levers that, he demonstrated that he had a sophisticated knowledge of forces, and designing the claws and designing the counterweights would have certainly been within the bounds of knowledge he had acquired. Certainly being within the bounds of knowledge he had acquired. Certainly being within the bounds of knowledge he had acquired. And buoyancy shows that he was aware of the equilibrium needed for a boat to float, as well as the necessary force needed to make it capsize. Since it was indeed possible for him to devise and build the claw, the next stage is to investigate if it would have worked. The main issue with Archimedes' claw was not whether it was theoretical, but practical. Experiments with scale models, like that done in the BBC documentary Secrets of the Ancients in 1999, and a Discovery Channel show Super Weapons of the Ancient World in 2007, demonstrate that, at least on a smaller level, the claw would have been able to move and capsize Roman galleys. Considering that the galleys would also have had siege ladders for scaling the walls raised, then the Archimedes claw seems even more plausible. Even though there is no direct proof and much doubt that Archimedes did build a device such as the claw, there is little doubt that theoretically and practically it would have worked. Perhaps the most controversial of Archimedes' creations was his death ray. This was a series of highly polished mirrors or shields arranged in a parabola which used focused sun rays to form an intense beam of concentrated light. According to later historians, when striking a wooden Roman galley, this light would set the boat ablaze. The principle is well known today, and is certainly possible with today's modern materials and techniques, but the device appeared in texts much later than when the siege occurred. Lucian and Galen both reported that Archimedes set fire to ships through artificial means, however both were from much later in history. Again, Archimedes would have certainly had the knowledge for this invention, but the main problem is that it is questionable whether such a device was practical. A group of students from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology tested the device with 30 centimetre mirrored tiles and managed to create flames and burn a model galley from a range of 30 metres. However, this was under perfect conditions, and there was next to no sign of the test ship bursting into flames, as was reported by Lucian and Gallen. The TV show Mythbusters also tested the principle using authentic methods to build the array and asked the MIT group to try the experiment again, but the results were no different from the first. There may still be some doubt, but the evidence from the experiments suggests that the reports of the Archimedes death ray were exaggerations. Archimedes was an amazing mathematician, physicist, and inventor, and it is definitely possible that he had the understanding and ability necessary to devise and create such machines. Certainly, the historical literature and reconstruction attempts of the Archimedes claw suggest that a version was used at Syracuse, and that it caused fear amongst the Roman besiegers. The death ray, however, appears to be more of an embellishment, and it is unlikely that technology at the time of the siege was capable of creating the device. The records of Gallen and Lucian were written after the event, 
and Lucian merely suggests that Archimedes burned ships through artificial means and did not elaborate further. Ultimately, much of the speculation surrounding Archimedes' war machines appears to be fictitious, albeit built around a core of truth. Archimedes had such a brilliant and creative mind that it is no surprise that his work attracted exaggerations. However, these exaggerations do not detract from his work, but instead add an aura of mystery to the story surrounding his life. Ultimately, much of the speculation surrounding Archimedes' 